Okay, in this video, what we're going to take a look at is calculate enthalpy two different ways. One method is called the direct method, and that's actually what we're going to do first. So I'm going to label this, if I can spell direct right. Okay, and then uh, after we get through the direct method, over here, when we talk about Hess's law, this is called the indirect method. Okay, so there's actually three ways to calculate enthalpy. So we're going to talk about two of them right now. And then once we get a little bit further into the course, we'll talk about the third way. And that's looking at the bond energies. So uh, let's talk about this direct method. So in order to calculate the change in enthalpy for a reaction, which we're going to call this. So we're going to say the delta H, and then we've got the superscript zero. And then the subscript is reaction, so we know that part. Now that's super, this is called this, We in order to calculate this, the change in enthalpy for the reaction, we have to look at something called the standard enthalpies of formation, okay? Now that superscript is actually referring to the enthalpy being in standard state. And we define something being in standard state as having one atmosphere pressure and being at 298K, or room temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, okay? So the way that we calculate uh, the change in enthalpy is that we take, it. let's say if we have this generic reaction here where you have A moles of A plus B moles of B yields C moles of C plus D moles of D, the way we do this is to take the products and subtract it from the reactants. So keep in mind, that this is going to be the change in enthalpy for the products minus the change in enthalpy for the reactants. Okay, and all of this is going to be at standard state, so I'm going to include that, that superscript zero. Okay, so that being said, let's take a look at this following line. So if we take the products of this reaction, so the enthalpy of formation of product C and then what we're going to do is multiply that by the coefficient, C, lowercase c. We'll do the same thing for the enthalpy of formation for compound D. We multiply it by that coefficient, lowercase d, and then add those two up, and that's how we get to the enthalpy of the products. We'll do, do the same thing for the reactants this time. Find the enthalpy of formation of compound A, and multiply it by its coefficient from the reaction. And we'll do the same thing for the enthalpy of formation of compound B. We'll multiply it by its coefficient B, and then add those two up, and that gives us the enthalpy of the reactants. And then once we subtract the enthalpy of the products from the enthalpy of the reactants, we can get the enthalpy of the reaction at standard state. Okay, so next question. Where are all these enthalpies of formation coming from? They are all constants, so you're going to have charts to help you find this. So down below, here is a sample chart of enthalpies of formation, okay? So this is not a complete chart, but in your textbook, in your textbook, there is an appendix that has thermodynamic values, and so you can look up all the enthalpies of formation of pretty much any compound that you want. Okay, so let's take a look at some of this. Uh, if you notice, there's some zeros here in this table. Like, for instance, right on the top, silver as a solid is zero. Okay, aluminum as a solid is zero. Uh, calcium as a solid is zero. Okay, carbon in the form of graphite is zero, but carbon in the form of diamond actually has a positive value. So what's going on? What are all these zeros? The zeros mean that you're dealing with that element in its elemental state. So if we're going to find this in nature, that's what this element exists as. So anytime you have anything elemental, automatically its enthalpy is going to be zero. Okay. Now, this is really, really, really important. When we write a balanced chemical reaction, we have to keep in mind the phases because the phases are going to give us different values. So, for instance, if we take a look at water down below, water 
has a value in the gas state of negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole. Water in the liquid state has a value of negative 285.8. So it's extremely important that when you take a look at these values, when you're reading the chart, you make sure that you're dealing with the right state. Okay, so dealing with this uh, kind of a problem, let's uh, you know let let's try an example of one of these problems where you're calculating the enthalpy of a reaction from the enthalpy of formation. All right, so here's our problem: benzene, which is C6H6, burns in air to produce carbon dioxide and liquid water. Calculate the heat released in kilojoules per gram of the compound reacted with oxygen. The standard enthalpy of formation of benzene is 49.04 kilojoules per mole. All right, so we've got some information here. We don't have a balanced chemical reaction, so we're gonna have to get that. And so this first sentence right here, and let me block it off. This is the chemical reaction in words. So it's telling us benzene is burning in air to produce carbon dioxide and water. So this is a, this is a combustion reaction. Okay, so let me start writing this. So you've got benzene C6H6, which this problem doesn't say, uh, but benzene is a liquid, so I'm going to put a lowercase l. And we're also given that uh, that enthalpy of formation, so we're, we're pretty good on that. Okay, plus O2, which is going to be a gas, yields CO2 gas plus water, and this is going to be in the liquid state. Okay, so we got our balanced chemical, we got our chemical equation, now we got to balance it. So on the left hand side, you've got six carbons. On the right-hand side, you've got one, so that means I got to put a six in front of the CO2. Okay, we balance the hydrogens next. You got a six here. On the left, you got two here on the right, so I got to put a three in front of that. So if we count up the oxygens on the left, you've got six times two, which is twelve, plus three, which is fifteen. You've got two on the right, so we're going to write that as the fifteen halves. But if we're going to balance this and get rid of this fraction, we multiply this fraction by 2, so that way we get 15. But if we multiply that by 2, the oxygen by 2, we also have to multiply everything else by 2. So now you're going to have 2 moles of benzene. You're going to have 2 moles. Uh, you're going to have 12 moles of carbon dioxide. And now you're going to have 6 moles of water. Okay. So there's your balanced chemical reaction. Okay, so that's the first step. So the next step, what we want to do is look up all of these enthalpies of formation for each of these compounds. Okay, so I'm going to make a I'm going to make a row right underneath the the chemical equation, and what we're going to do is look up the enthalpies of formation for each of these compounds. So uh, first off, we know Benzene has a value of 49.04 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so we know that one. Now, O2 in the gas state, if I go back up to my chart, O2 over here has a value of zero. Again, it's in its elemental state. So now we know this one is zero. So let me write that in. All right, carbon dioxide. Let's go back in the chart and look this up. CO2 as a gas is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. So let's go back in the chart. Okay, and then water. Let's go back in the chart and look up water. Liquid water is negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. All right. All right. So now we got our enthalpies of formation for each of these compounds. What we need to do is start uh, start solving this problem. So again, using that equation that we saw on the on the other page, the change in enthalpy 
of uh, the reaction at standard state is equal to the sum, and I'm going to use the summation symbol, of all the enthalpies of formation of products minus the sum of all the enthalpies of formation of the reactants. Okay, so what we're going to do is focus on one term at a time. Let's focus just on the enthalpies of the product. So I'm going to put this in brackets. So the first one is the carbon dioxide. So that was negative 393.5 and we got 12 moles. So I'm going to take 12 times negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and I'm going to add that to the next one is water. We've got six moles of water, so that would be six times negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that's the that's the react uh, that's your product side. If we do the same thing for the reactants, okay, I'm going to put the minus, and then what I'm going to do is put another bra series of brackets. Let's deal with benzene. You had two moles of benzene, and the formation, the enthalpy of formation was a positive 49.04 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and we're going to add that to the oxygen. You had 15 moles of oxygen, but this one is zero kilojoules per mole. Okay, all right, so there, there it is. Now we just got to do the work inside inside that area, inside the brackets. So let's see what we got. If we take 12 times 3, negative 393.5, that gives us a value of negative 4722 kilojoules per mole. All right. And then if we take 6 times the negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole, that gives us a value of negative 1714.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that's the products. So the reactants, it, two times a positive 49.04 gives us a positive 98.08 kilojoules per mole. And then 15 times zero gives us zero. Okay, all right. So now let's do that math inside the parentheses. So negative 47.22 kilojoules per mole plus, oops, let me get my calculator, negative 47.22 kilojoules per mole plus a negative 1714.8. That gives us a value of negative 6,436.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay. And then for the, for the reactant side, we got 98 plus zero. So that one's easy. 98.08 kilojoules per mole. All right, so now we're just going to take the re the products minus the reactants. So that's going to be negative 64, 36.8 minus 98.08. And so the grand total is negative 6,534.88 kilojoules per mole. All right, we're almost done with this problem. So this is the enthalpy of, of this reaction at standard state. Okay, now there's one more problem with this. It's telling us that we want to calculate the heat released in kilojoules per gram. So we're in kilojoules per mole. We need to go to kilojoules per gram. So to get to that part, we're going to take that kilojoules per mole that we just calculated, negative 6534.88 kilojoules, and I'm going to set it up as a fraction, per one mole of benzene, C6H6. Okay? Well, actually, it wouldn't be one mole because in the formula, we have two moles of benzene, so I need to change this to a two. Good call. All right. So now we need to get that molecular form, molecular weight of benzene. The molecular weight of benzene is going to be 78.11 grams per mole. So I'm going to say one mole of benzene on top is going to be 78.11 grams on the bottom. 
Okay, so if you take negative 65, 34.88 and divide it by the product of 2 times 78.11, the total value that I should get is negative 41.83 kilojoules per gram. And there it is. Okay, now this is a little bit different. Uh, so because it's asking us to calculate kilojoules per gram, most of the time the problem is going to ask you to calculate kilojoules per mole. But there it is. That's how we do this problem.